Hello folks. This is gonna be your very basic do-it-yourself video, DIY. Um, every time I do a video on fixing something in the trailer, somewhere along my systems, all my social media, <laughs> I get questions about how to put on struts. And I've written various things about how to do it and none of them are really right. But um, I'm gonna do a quick do-it-yourself video today on how to install struts on your A-liner or on your A-frame. Um, I think it's the same. Actually, I think it's the same for anything. I've done it under my bed. I've done it under the A-liner's front and back roofs. Uh, I've done it um, on a box in the house. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty much the same everywhere. So let's get on it. Let's go and find out first what tools you'll need, what uh, equipment, and what you'll have to buy. All right? Okay, let's start off with what you need. Obviously, you need the strut. <laughs> this is a 24-inch, 50-pound uh, strut. It tells on it what it is. It'll be 25 inches once I get the ends on it. You need to buy the ends separately. There's different kinds of ends. This is the kind I use. It has a little wire in there, if you can see the wire. And you take the wire out by pulling this little thing out and there is the wire. When you buy these ends, buy a bag of these wires because you're going to lose these. You drop these, you'll never find them again unless you're really good. Um, but they go in a tiny little hole in the back like this. They just slide in there and then they lock over to lock the ball of the end in there. And you'll need two of these for every strut you install and this goes over that little ball and of course with that wire in there it won't go in there but if I take the wire out take the wire out it goes in there really nicely it even snaps in and it's in there but Without the wire locking it in there, it will come out. So you need to have the wires. And then you need a spacer for the front roof. You need two spacers for the front roof and you need a only one for the back. But you have this, you have this protrusion on the bottom of these so you have to put a hole in here for that to sit flat or it won't. And I just used a piece of aluminum that I had laying around. So that's just a piece of scrap aluminum from cutting a hole in something. Um, but you can use anything. You can use a piece of steel, a piece of plastic, a piece of wood, um, whatever you want to put because this is going to be, this is going to need to be out from the trailer wall so that the, when it, when the roof shuts it doesn't hit it. Otherwise you'll hit it. We'll show you that outside. But this is the, the little bag of springs that go in that. <laughs> you need a drill. I've got a cordless drill here. This is one of my favorite drills. Um, Hitachi doesn't make these anymore. I think they're now called Matibos. But it's a nice battery powered drill. Easy to put in and out. You need the right size drill bit for the rivets. And you need them to, to you can use it to take rivets out or to put rivets in. And these are the rivets and you'll need two sizes. You need a long one and a short one. For the front roof you need longer ones because you got the spacers in there. And for the back roofs you might not need the long ones. You might just want the short ones. But you can probably use the long ones for either. But make note they're long and short when it comes to rivets. On every rivet box there's instructions on what size they are and what size drill you need. So make sure you have the right size drill. You don't want to use the wrong size drill and try to hone the hole to get it the right size. You need a good rivet gun and this is a real nice one. It, it pivots to wherever you know you're, you're, you want to be in the right angle. But you also want to get a long gun. Don't get a short one because this is a lot of force you're using. You need a big long gun. 
you can buy an electric one that's great and of course you need a tape measure so you can work on these things so that's the basic tools but first let's talk about a few things that can go wrong this is the very first one I ever did and if you look at it um, the sidewall when it comes up when I put the a wall up it hits this I'm gonna grind that down this afternoon but you want to make sure you're down far enough you want to be down close enough to this line on the lower wall aluminum extrusion so that you don't have the sidewall hitting this we're gonna grind that down today so that's that's one of the things you want to make sure of the other thing you want to plan on is I put the spacers in here to hold this out against the wall this by the way is upside down the fat part should be on the top and the skinny part should be on the bottom so it doesn't hit I'll show you this one over here this one is right skinny part down that part up it's uh just because you don't want water you don't want water coming down this and running into the cylinder which can't happen now this does have a rubber grommet at the top but i'm gonna it's real easy to change these around so i'm just gonna flip it i just have to pull that pin out and flip it in fact i'll just do that There. See how easy that was? Now I have the pins in my hand. <laughs> I'm going to try to put them back in without losing them. The, the hard part is putting them back in. There. That one was easy because the hole was at the top. Let's see the other end. The holes down here. There, so they were put back together. Down there, good and tight, and it works fine. Now, put a piece of masking tape or painter's tape along your edges so that you can write on it and not, uh, not leave marks all over your trailer. All right, now, you've got your strut and it's all put together. You've got the ends on it, you've got the little attachment pieces on it, all set to go. But really, this is just for measuring, okay? You've got this and it's, it's you wanna know where you're going to attach it so put this on here like this and let somebody hold it okay and they, they got to hold it fairly steady and then you just put this up like this and you can see that this isn't touching the roof the way it should be so let's move it a little closer to here all right now it's a little far from the roof so let's go back a little bit all right, so somewhere in here, it's going to hit this roof. You can see, if I needed to mount that, like that, okay? So let's say those are the two mounting points, okay? That's what we think is the good point to mount it. Well, it looks nice, it's perpendicular and everything. So let's take a pencil and mark it. And we're marking the center of the ball. You can mark the whole thing if you want. And let's mark this one down here. All right. So this is where we are here. And this is where we are here now that's for extended okay now what about when the roof collapses and this goes into here now when it's collapsed 
it's going to be, you know, if we take the end, the end is about an inch and a half. Okay, so if we give an inch and a half, if we do an inch and a half from that end and down to there, we've got approximately 15 inches to the end. All right. So what I do, so what I say is I say take, sorry the sun's not in my eyes, but I like it that way. I, I got to keep kicking the ball for him or he's going to be hitting the tripod. So. so if we then measure from our mounting point here, 15 and 3 quarters inches to here, to right there, then I take a string from the hinge, way back here on the corner. Way back here, this is the corner, so I have to hold it there. And I go to that mark, and I go up here like this, and that ain't gonna work, because this is where that is. This spot here is over here. If I, if I am, if I am attached up here, it's gonna wanna be down here, which is only about six inches. So that ain't gonna work. There's too much, too much movement, too much compression to fit the, the cylinder. So, so if this is here like this, when it comes down, it, it wants to be here, but here, but here from the hinge is around here. So that doesn't work. So, now, we move this, you just move it a couple inches, and it will move down. So instead of being here where you thought was a good area, you need to move this towards the hinge. So you move this towards the hinge, and this will kind of, in the bottom, will come along. So, you get around here, and you figure out that maybe that's the right spot. So let's mark that. So now we've so now we've marked we've moved it in this way a little bit and we've moved this down this way a little bit. Now, now let's take our string and see how that works. Again, from the hinge, we go to where the ball will be and we move down here. And that's that's a little better, but it's not quite perfect. Because now this spot is going to come down to here. And if this is here, it's going to want to be here. So originally we had it up here, and that's perpendicular to the roof. And that's a pretty good sight. Now if I had a longer strut, this might work. The longer strut would go way out here and the shorter struts in here. So I originally would um, have thought that 30 inch struts instead of 25 inch struts would be a little nicer. But anyways, um, one of the reasons is that they want the strut in front of the window, which, okay. So now we've moved this uh, this way and this has come down this way and it, and it moves a little on the bottom, moves this a lot on the top. So what you're doing is you're kind of balancing how close how close the bottom needs to be to the hinge to get this close to the hinge so that when it closes it comes down to where the strut really wants it to be so this is all i do i just work on this and i kind of eyeball it but it doesn't need to be exact because when you're compressing these you don't need to compress them all the way in fact you really don't want to you want to have a little bit of extra on the bottom so you're going to compress this down and it's going to come almost all the way, but it doesn't really matter to the strut. It's not like it's going to lock in down there or anything like that. So you want to have it a little too far apart. But what it will do is if it's, if it's too far extended, then the roof won't go up far enough, except the roofs are pretty flexible. And I got a ball here. Hang on a minute.
So we're now moving this. We've got the, the bottom where we think is good, the top where we think it's good. So, so much easier with a help. The kilo won't help me with this. But so, I've got the bottom where I want it, and I'm gonna mark the bottom. This can fall, I don't care. I'm holding the bottom where I want it. The bottom's right there. Now I put it back on that. I put the top where I want it here. I checked my latest spot with my string. I go if I'm here and the roof closes, where am I going to go? I'm going to go right here. So, roof closes, it's going to go right here. So, I'll mark that. Put a number on it. It's number four. The fourth fourth place we've marked. And then I'll take my strut and I'll put it back in the spot I chose last. And it's like it's gonna hit right here. So that's pretty good. Could we move it? Could we move it a little bit back a little bit? Yeah, we could, but that's not bad. That'll leave approximately, that'll leave approximately uh, half an inch of shaft outside the uh, cylinder when the, when the roof is closed, which is okay. And your strut force is really, this is where the spring force is right here. So your strut force is really right near that spring force. I think if we had 30 inch cylinders, we would probably be almost right on that spring force. But of course, it covers the window. So if you went to a 30 inch strut, it really, all the techniques are the same. You, you do the same measurement and everything. But so right now, so we've got this mark here. We got a nice center post drill hole here. I've got a nice center post drill point here and that will come down to here. And I'll show you that on one of my installations. I'll take off the hat so you can see my face. Um, I usually I wear the hat mostly because of the bugs. But as you can see this is way out here and this is below where the springs are. The springs would be up here and so it's way below it. If you want to cheat from the back of the roof and this is this is the front roof which is different from the back roof they're both different but if you go um, to the center of the ball to the edge of the roof down here we're 12 and three quarters and to the actual ball the other ball it's about 28 and three quarters so if you want to cheat if you want to cheat, you can use those measurements to start. But again, that's the front roof, and it's uh, different on the back a little bit. Let's look at my back one. I'll show you that one. So this is the latest one. And let's see, from the ball to the hinge is 33. <laughs> 33 inches. And from the ball upper ball to the hinge is 18 and a half. Now you'll notice this isn't way up on the very top because I have this bar up here. This is down in the thing and the, the thing you have to be careful of is that this these rivets aren't going to hit the wall and they're not going to scrape on the thing down here. But if you see how I've done this you can see the line of arc I've drawn from the hinge. Again, using my highly specialized string, I took my pencil from the spring 
and I just drew an arc up to where that should go. This is the distance from here to there, from this to this, okay? So I want to make sure that this distance is that distance. So I mark it here, and I go to there, and I use a... And you can see that even fully shut, I have some extra. It's not going all the way in. And that's kind of what I want. So that's how that works. And this lines up with these lines. This lines up with the lines of the arc lines I drew from the hinge to here. This is the measurement you need to know from this ball to this ball. Okay, and obviously I Spread mine out just a little because I like to have that extra room. And you can see this is quite a ways down on this because the sidewall overlaps. So now you understand placement of the struts. Now, actual installation. You can leave these on if you want. And again, if you've got a friend or a partner. Now, the first thing you want to do, though, is you want to drill out your spacers. If you're using spacers like I did. And what I did is I took a pair of vice grips and I pinched that little bugger in there as hard as I could. And then I drilled through these holes into the spacer. And I did all three of them. So that I knew that it was right. Though you can, I also, if you're not real accurate on things like drilling, like I'm not, or measuring, drill one hole. And then when you install this, install it one hole at a time until you get one hole at the bottom, one hole at the top. See how it works? If it doesn't work, just drill the rivet out. The same drill that you drill the rivet hole, you can drill the rivet out of, out with. The only problem is that it is going to increase the size of the hole just a little. But um, I think you'll be all right most of the time because rivets are pretty highly expanding. Um, use regular rivets. Don't use bolts or screws or nuts. Um, the trailer just doesn't have good uh, bite power for screws and bolts. and. If you increase the end of the screw, the bolt that far with a nut and all that stuff, um, you're going to be rubbing and causing scratching and all sorts of things. I haven't had luck with bolts. I put my, my solar panel on with nuts and bolts and they, they're coming loose all the time. So I got to keep an eye on them and screw them down and make sure they're tight. The rivets never come loose. They are forever. So, um, but they're easy to remove with a drill of the right size. You can see here that the shaft rubs on here a little bit. And it's because I don't have enough spacers. I didn't have thick enough spacers. I'm probably going to put some uh, Teflon tape on there. Try to keep that from rubbing. That's what happens if you don't have enough spacers. I probably could have put a spacer at the top and uh, you know, a little more spacer at the bottom. Everything on this trailer is cockeyed it's not square anymore like it should be well folks i hope that wasn't too confusing or too uh, difficult to understand it's really an easy job and you can't really screw it up um you screw it up just get a another inch larger uh strut so there are adjustments with the ends you can unscrew the ends a little bit and have a little space in there i put some kind of caulk or something on them to keep them from rusting though because you got this threads open um you don't need anything like Loctite on anything. You don't need any special uh, things. The struts will probably last five to 10 years um, if you use the damn trailer every weekend. The struts won't get tired um, if it's down all the time. They won't get tired if it's up all the time. So, um, and they're so easy to change. You just pull those pins. Um, the struts are gotten from uh, McMaster Car down in the description just below the video hit the more there's a little thing that says see more 
hit that, that'll have all the links and everything. It seems nobody ever looks at those things. The McMaster car links and the model numbers and everything will be in there. So, um, again, I'm using those 24 inch struts. If you want to go bigger, go bigger. All right, leave me comments, give me a thumbs up, ask me any questions, uh, other things you want to see. Um, I'm going to change the bungees this weekend, so that'll be probably be another video coming up. Um, it's the easiest thing in the world to change bungees. Uh, you just got to find the right bungee size. So <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't found the right bungee size yet. So um, we're still looking for that. But hopefully I'll get that and change it this weekend. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you on the road. I hope. Soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Give me that ball. Give me the ball. Out. Don't worry, he's gonna find it. You watch. He's got it. <laughs> That to pester me with the ball. <laughs> <laughs>